Welcome back again. Uh, so today what we're going to talk about is some different light sensors. So kind of a different feel today. Uh, no like green board, no MP lab. I'm uh, just going to talk about some sensors that we're going to use in lab and also some sensors that you might want for your project depending on what you're doing. Uh, so here are some of the things we're going to talk about uh, and we'll hit each one a little bit in detail. Uh, but the one I want to talk about first and foremost is the one we're going to use in lab quite a bit because uh, that's kind of what matters to everybody. And the thing that we're going to use a lot in lab is an IR circuit. Um, so an IR circuit consists of two parts. Uh, so you've got your emitter, um, which is really just an LED, right? So it's just an IR emitter. So it's just like every other LED we've seen. You've got a current limiting resistor. Uh, you've got your LED. Um, you will have to size the resistor. It won't always be a 330. A 330 will work okay, uh, but you can actually go a little lower on these. The biggest difference between these and the ones that we use all the time is that these are IR, so you can't see them with your eye, uh, but they definitely still exist. They emit light, you just can't see it. And then the detector is over here. The detector is really just a BJT, uh, which is weird uh, because it's a BJT with two legs. Um, it's still got an emitter and a collector, uh, but the base is not a wire, it's just light. So light is the signal that decides whether this thing like lets current through or not. So they're kind of neat. Uh, we're going to use them quite a bit and we're going to talk about them more in detail. The thing I'll say about uh, these, this IR circuit is that it's going to give you a voltage which is not always a clean binary. Uh, so we're going to actually choose to always read it with analog. Uh, so we're going to typically try to use it on like, you know, RA0 or RA1 or, you know, maybe one of the other RAs. And we're going to use it in the labs and it's going to work out pretty great. But we are going to read it as an analog. I just wanted to tell you that up front. What do they actually look like? Uh, so here's a real uh, emitter detector pair. They can be any color, right? But it turns out that our IR emitters um, are clear <laughs> um, and our uh, photo detectors are black, right? Uh, we order them in clear and black just so that we can tell the difference. Uh, but you can definitely buy like clear detectors uh, and they work just the same. It's just that they look the same as the emitters and that's very confusing. The way you build up the circuit is pretty simple. I mean, we saw it on the last slide, right? So the uh, IR emitter is just an LED. So you know you could use a 330 here, but we're going to go a little lower than that. The detector is a little bit more complex. So it's a BJT. So just like any old BJT, you ground the emitter leg. Uh, so that's pretty normal. And then the collector, what we do with it is we want it to be a signal to the pick. So what a BJT does is it either grounds something or it leaves it floating um, or anywhere in between, right? So what this does is whenever it sees light, so whenever light is present, um, this thing turns on. Um, and so when the BJT turns on, it grounds the signal. Um, so the signal sees zero volts when it's on. Um, but if it was off, then what it'll do is like it sees no light, it turns off, it will not let any current go through here, no current shall pass, um, and the signal has no choice but to see the five volts that come through the resistor. So that's kind of the basic idea. Uh, let's see if you can uh, kind of repeat what I just said uh, and fill out these two top boxes. Uh, then the two below boxes will fill out together. So see if you can basically repeat what I just said. All right, so hopefully that was uh, easy for you. So when the when the light is on, what you're going to want to do is uh, look at the signal, and the signal, whenever this thing is on, it sees light, um, it's going to give you zero volts, right? And then whenever it's off, so like it just doesn't allow anything through, um, it's going to see five volts. If I wanted to kind of draw these, uh, so I'm going to draw just this side, because this side's boring to draw. If it's on, it's going to kind of look as if it's a direct connection to ground, right? So it's letting through as much current as you could possibly want. Um, and then the signal, which is right here, 
is going to just look grounded. If it's off, it's going to let no current go through, so it's going to look like an open switch. And so the signal is just going to um, see the 5 volts. So I kind of like to think about these two pictures of what happens when it's fully on, what happens when it's fully off. So the way you actually size these resistors, uh, the first one is the emitter. The emitter calculation is quite easy. You look at things like, you know, what is the, uh, the forward voltage drop? Um, so, you know, you can look around in this data sheet and you can find the forward voltage drop. So on this emitter, it's about 1.6. That's basically the same as what we've been using before. You look for things like what is the um, continuous forward current that it can handle. Um, it looks like the one that we picked up, it can handle 60, which is a little higher than our LEDs. Um, so if you wanted to be conservative, you might shoot for half of that and you might shoot for 30 milliamps. Uh, so you know, you could do a V equals IR. And so I'm not gonna do the math all the way through, but it's somewhere like in the order of more like 100, 120, somewhere in that range. What we're gonna use is we're gonna use closer to like 150, um, because if we want it to be a little brighter, we could actually get away with that. It turns out that if you can't find 150 in the back, um, and you use a 330, uh, that will actually work fine, right? It'll be less current, which will be less bright, but you'll probably still be able to use it just fine. But in an ideal world, we'd use something more like 150. Before I get off the slide, though, I want to show you one thing that is really neat, um, and that is this number right here. This is the peak forward current, um, if you're just going to flash it for a little bit. And it's neat because this number is one amp, right? <laughs> one amp that's a lot um, that's a lot more than 30 milliamps and in order to actually use it at one amp what you have to do is you have to keep it on at most um, like one three hundredth of the time <laughs> so that's kind of a, a crazy thing to do but if you can flash it like really fast like you know you just flash it for like one millisecond and then leave it off for like 300 you can run that thing really super super bright um, and it really does work to make it much brighter and that's a trick you can use for your projects if you want to run them really bright you can flash them uh, like on for like a millisecond and you can actually do them really bright which is cool as far as the detector sizing goes um, this resistor over here if everything was theoretical, um, it would just be like an infinite amount of current uh, when it sees light, uh, and then you know zero current uh, whenever it, it sees darkness. Um, and if if that happened, then this could be any value you wanted, right? It just wouldn't matter. And we'd probably use something like a 1K, um, or you know we might use something like a 10K. It wouldn't matter. It would just work. Um, but to actually size it well, you have to theoretically kind of guess um, and then actually do an experiment um, and see if you need to tweak it from your theoretical guess. Uh, it's actually kind of a more complex topic so we'll save that for the next video lecture. Uh, so I think that that is uh, all I've got for this time. I'll see you when we talk about the specifics of sizing that detector resistor. See you then.